Then I felt something touching me. That thing touched me. It woke me up because I couldn't do anything. It made me to sit on the bed. I sat on the bed. It started touching me, touching my face. It, it touched my private parts. Hi, my name is Ribone Mohali. I'm 29 years of age. I was born in 1992, December 21st. Uh, I was born in Ramatsipe, Tafelkop. I'm the second child of the four kids. Um, yeah, I'm the second. My mother has two girls and two boys. We, I, I literally grew up in Alexander. My parents moved to Alexander. I don't know at what age, I'm not sure. I just saw myself stay in Alexander. Then at the age of 10, 9, 10, we moved to Limpopo. Ramatlala Muleji. We stayed there for a year. And then the following year in 2003, no, it was 2002, December, we moved back to Alexander. I did my grade five there. And then around September 2003, uh, I remember one day I was with my friend and we were, we were from fishing her sister from Crutch. Then when we were crossing the road, we were waiting for, for the car to pass. And then that car passed immediately when it passed. Uh, I felt like maybe the, the, the car climbed on a, on a little bit of a stone and it got into my eye. It was so bad, it was so bad. Uh, I, I scratched my eye trying to take the, the stone out of my eye, but it couldn't, so I cried and I ran to my mother. I told my mom that uh, I think that a stone got into my eye. She tried to blow the stone out of my eye, but it didn't come out. Then she said, open your eye, let me see. I opened my eye and then she said, no, you have a, a sore in your, a sore in your eye. So it's a reddish one, probably it'll just, it'll go away. Okay, then when it, it was night time, yeah, the stone had gone away, but my eye started itching from that day. Then a week later, I started realizing that my eyes don't see the same way as they used to. My mother took me to the clinic, we went to the clinic, they said, oh, they gave me eye drops and they said I should come back for a checkup. Because you know, when you are at school, the teacher will keep on threatening you. If you don't come to school the following day, I'm going to beat you and they were beating us for real. Then I was to my mom, no, I'm not going back to that clinic because the teacher is going to beat me. I will go around December. Then in December, we moved to Mpumalanga, Kumloto. We went to Mpumalanga. I never went to the eye clinic checkup again. Then we went to stay in Mpumalanga. I stayed there. Then first month of 2004, I was in grade six. When I went to class, I could also realize that now my eyes are worse than last year. Then I was taken to stay in front of in front of the chalkboard so that I can see the board properly. I was staying there, I was sitting there. When they were writing, I, uh, I had to get closer to the board so that I can see what's happening, what, what, what has been written on the board. Then fast forward, I was taken to a clinic called another 2004. Again, they, then the, the, at the clinic, they kept on giving me eye drops, but there was no difference. Then I was referred to the eye clinic in, Kwamhlanga Hospital. I went there for, and like when they will give you an appointment around April, you will see the doctor maybe in June or July. So, and then in around June, July, I went to, to see the eye doctor. I was prescribed some eyeglasses. I used them 2004, 2005. Then I saw her, but they're not making such difference. I kept on wearing them. They changed them, they give me the other lenses. 2006, I was in grade eight. In grade eight, hi, now I saw her, these glasses, like they, they don't work at all. I went back to the eye doctor. He said, hey, there's nothing that they can do. They can see her, my eyes don't really need glasses. Then they transferred me to another doctor in Haman Skral. I thought uh, Dr. Moyo in Haman School, he's an eye specialist. I went there in 2006 and then, okay, 
I forgot this part. In 2006, around January, I can really, you know, January, the schools are opening. When I got to class, like, I cried that day, like, the whole day. I couldn't stop because I couldn't see the board, I couldn't see the book. I get in December, we don't, we don't open our books. December, when the schools close, little book, they get closed. We don't open them at all. So I wasn't aware that now my eyes are worse. I could notice that my, the eye changes when I get to school or when I look at a book. Then I was like, oh, now my eyes are so worse, worse, worse than before. Now new teachers, new school, new environment, new everything. My, the previous teachers understood my situation. They knew me from grade six. Now these are the new teachers. They didn't understand. I tried to explain her in I can't see. Fine. I was struggling with that. I had to book, I had to put the book like this straight to my face so that I can see what's happening. When I have to go to the board, I, I couldn't see the board at all. Even when I stepped closer, I couldn't see anything. So Elena had to had to say what was happening on the board so that I can write. During the orals, yo, I was struggling. I, I had to copy the whole textbook on a book, like in bigger fonts, so that I can read that book and do my oral presentation. I, then I went to that eye doctor in Amanskral, Dr. Moyo. He said, uh, my eyes are damaged. He doesn't know what's happening, but my eyes have a lot of water. Then a lot of water, okay, fine. I also cried, I became emotional. My mother was also emotional. We told my dad, we're not staying with my dad. My dad used to come that month and to come and see us. Then we decided to go go Teflop. One of our family members told us for a Teflop hospital, like they are very good with eyes. We went there, they gave us an appointment. I started attending Teflop hospital. Fast forward, going there, they, I was being given eye drops to use. And then they said, they think her Kilabela is hereditary, something like that. I took it from one of my grandparents or whatever. Then we told them that no one is blind in my family, nobody has eye problems. Then they said, I'm opted for an operation. I should come for an operation. That 2006, on the operation day, we went to the hospital. Like on the way we were discussing, my father said, but now I don't believe for a And if it's hereditary, this thing is not being operated, most then we decided that no, we are going to cancel the operation because maybe I was bewitched or something. They should take me to, to traditional healers before I can do an operation. Then I went to the hospital on the operation day. Fortunately, the doctor that was supposed to operate us, they called, that was supposed to operate me. They called my parents and told them, Hore, that they don't think it's a good idea for me to get operated. To tell us the truth, they don't know what's happening with my eyes. They were just guessing when they said, uh, this is hereditary, because according to him, when he's checking my eyes, this is not hereditary. It's something that he doesn't know what is it. So he doesn't want to operate something that he don't know. Then they, he advised my parents to sign I don't know what that form is called, but when you deny operation or when you deny medical assistance, then we sign that form. Fairly, we had this, we had agreed with my parents that I won't do it, but it was fortunate that the doctor also said we should not do it. After that, I was told to apply for a disability grant because that doctor told my parents that according the way he see things, I won't see ever again, and my eyes will eventually be closed, I'll eventually go, go blind, because at that time I still had a little bit of sight. Then in 2007, we, I, I was transferred to, to HF Hospital, it's in Pretoria. I was taking my medication from there. The whole of 2007, nothing was happening. I dropped out of school in 2006, around in June. I didn't write any test, no exam, nothing. Like my report came written zero, zero, seven, like, Eight zeros, that cost the nothing. I, 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 I wrote nothing. I never got hurt by that because I know I knew her, I didn't write anything, and I decided to drop out of school. We went to the social workers. The social workers said there's nothing that they can do. They don't know any of the schools that caters people with low vision. So 
I was now forced to stay at home. I didn't like that. It was paining. When I see my neighbors not going to school because of they don't want to, like some of my neighbors just dropped out of school because of they just wanted to, I, I would tell my mother, Horio Mara, life is unfair. I wish this guy was the one who was blind and I was giving his eyesight because look at, look at him now, he's wasting his time. Like when I see somebody not going to school at my age, it was hurting so, so bad. I would cry, like crying for that person, Horio, if only he knew how bad I need those eyes of his because it seems like he doesn't know the need of those eyes. Then, okay, 2008, we went back to stay in Alexander. Life was hard in Pumalanga. My father was doing things that my mother didn't like. Then my mother said, no, I'm go we are going to stay with him there so that he can take care of us. I went, we went to stay with my father and then things started to take the other turn. Because I forgot to say that in 2007, there was this other day, I guess I wasn't going to school now. I was 13, 14 there between 13 and 14, yeah. And then I was not going to school. I was sleeping during the day. So I woke up, like I slept last night. Then in the morning I was still sleeping. When I woke up, I was blind. I was like, what? I'm, yo, I went crazy. Cause at first I thought that it is during, it is at, it's still at night. And I was like, but no, I can hear like chickens outside in bed. There's no way it can be nighttime. Then my younger sister came to my bed because I, I didn't see her is hair. She touched me. She was playing with water. I screamed. I jumped. I bumped to the door like I hurt myself. I was so, so scared. I was terrified. I didn't know where is the door. I screamed. Then my mother came running to our house and she said, what's wrong? I told her well, something just touched me. And my younger sister, she was scared of what I did. She just kept quiet because I think she was three two or three years of age. Then my mother thought, no, it's your sister. She just touched me. I was like, but I can't see anything. Why, why, why would she, she, she be playing with water at night? My mother said, no, it's not night, it's morning. I'm doing the laundry outside. Yo, I cried. I, I was like, now, mom, I can't see anything. It means that I just went blind. Then throughout the day, my eyesight came, like came. My eye, yeah, the vision just became visible. And then my eyesight went back to where it was that day. And then fast forward 2008, I kept on losing my sight like bit by bit. Now I could only see things that were very, very close to me. I could see some colors. If you were sitting, if you were standing maybe let's say 10 centimeters away from me, I couldn't see. You have to be like this so, so close so that I can look at you. If you are just like this, I couldn't see who's, like you have to bring my face as if like you are kissing me, you have to bring your face next to mine. Then 2008, when we were staying with my father in January, I remember I was sleeping at night. I started hearing things, like I started hearing like people are talking outside and I wasn't dreaming, I wasn't imagining it. I could hear oh, there are people talking outside. In the morning I told my mother, oh, there were people in, in our yard, I think maybe they were criminals or something. Mama said, I probably maybe they were thieves, but they didn't take anything. Then the following night again, my father left the horse pipe outside. Then I heard someone, somebody, as if like they are dragging the horse pipe, they are taking it with, it, with them. I, I woke my mother, I was like, Mama, someone is stealing the horse pipe outside. My mother like peeked with the window and she said, no, the horse pipe is still there. And I could still hear like hur, hur, a lot of noise. I told her, my mother said, there's nothing happening. The following day, the horse pipe was still there. This thing, I kept on, I kept on hearing people like taking the horse pipe every day, but there was nothing. I don't know what was that thing that was crawling on our yard. Probably maybe it was a snake or whatever. I don't know. And then around February, uh, some of our family members suggested to my mom that they should take me to the so she took me to other church. I won't mention the name because that church they believe for it have helped many people. So my parents took me there. They took me. It was on a Thursday. They took me to that church. That church performed their rituals where they banked their newspapers. They made me to drink a lot of coffee, a lot of cocoa, black tea with no sugar. 
and I was also steamed. I was told to bath with a tea. I bathed with a tea, then I was taken to the pasta. The pasta that was, the pasta that is, I think is, is the higher pasta on that branch, on that church. Then before he did anything to me, he started talking with the phone. He spoke with the phone. You know, you can hear the conversation if someone is trying to hide something or there are loopholes in their conversation. But I was like, ah, probably he's just hiding some of the church things. I'm just a church member. Maybe I don't need to hear those things that he's talking about. And then after talking with the phone, he bent the newspaper, he prayed with the newspaper, putting it around me, and then he, t he took something and put it in my eyes. When I went to the church, it, it was on a Friday, because on a Thursday, they gave my mother the instructions that she, he, she should buy this and that. On a Friday, we went back to the church again, where they did all of those things, and then he put something on, into my eyes, a liquid thing, uh, he said it's going to help me. After putting that thing, I couldn't see. Then I thought, ah, probably it's still this thing is still in my eyes. Then we went out of the church. When we went out, it was so, so blank. Not dark, blank, pure blank. I kept that eyesight till today. I lost my entire eyesight from that day. Then I thought, ah, maybe tomorrow I'm going to be fine. Tomorrow morning, I started seeing darkness. I, there was no improvement. Actually, things just got worse. Then they told my mother on that Friday that they're going, they're gonna come to our home, to our house, so that they can strengthen my house. Like uh, in African cultures, I don't know with the whites, but we all we believe that uh, I don't know what is it in English to protect the house from evil spirits, from witches and all of that, since I was hearing things. Then the pastor said, eh, Wena, and you also have a gift of seeing things. That's why you can, you are the only one who can see these things. Then they came on Saturday to do all of those things. They did them at night, around eight. They came in, uh, I don't know what they did to our house. And then after then they left. Four days after then, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at night, I was sleeping fine. Then I couldn't sleep. I was just on my bed, but I couldn't sleep. It hit 12, one, two, three. I was using, I don't know, it was Nokia C, 12 or C, what, what. When you were pressing the star a very long time, it was telling you the time. Then it was around uh, three, somewhere there. I could hear people talking outside. I was like, now I can hear them clearly, but I don't recognize their voices. It was too many women talking outside. I started feeling scared. I was like, no, this, it can't be. I think these are witches, but I wasn't sure. Then I decided to turn because I was facing the other side. I decided to turn to face the other side. When I turned, I immediately felt hands touching my arms like this. Someone touched my, my hold my arms, and same time I went to, I, I, I was held by sleeping paralysis. I couldn't move, I couldn't scream, I couldn't say anything, and I wasn't sleeping, I was fully awake. That person said to me, eh, I just kept on closing my eyes and I didn't say anything. Then she started touching me, um, she took something and drew me like I could feel what this person is writing stars on me, on my on my neck, on my arm. And then uh, she whispered something like she was talking with other people at her back. Then I tried to move. She came fast and held me tight. That sleeping paralysis went hard on me. I didn't do anything. I, I just sat there. After a while, then she left. When she left, I had our door like being closed, my bedroom door like, pa! Yo, then I screamed, the sleeping paralysis left me, and then I screamed, my parents came, I told them what happened. They couldn't believe, we started praying, we prayed, we prayed, until it hit four o'clock. Then my mother said I should come and sleep with them. I was sleeping with my siblings, my two siblings. I went and we went, all of us, to sleep with my parents on the floor. Then in the morning, I couldn't sleep anymore, I just stayed there. Around seven, my father left to work. My mother prepared my siblings to go to school and to crash. I was left with my mom. Then I slept on my, on my mother's bed. 
I was watching Generation. It used to play around 8 a.m., the repeat of it. Then I was watching the repeat. I was also not sleeping. I, I still remember. Then sleeping paralysis again. I could still hear Generation playing on the background, but I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything. Then I felt something touching me. That thing touched me. It woke me up because I couldn't do anything. It made me to sit on the bed. I sat on the bed. It started touching me, touching my face. It, it touched my private parts. And then it made me to kneel next to it. I knelt, I was on the bed. My mother didn't hear or see anything. I knelt on the bed and then I moved my hand to touch that thing. I don't know what is it, but when I touched it, I could see her, this is something like a human being. It was short, because I also touched its feet. It was short, like when I was kneeling, it was at the same height as me. Then it pushed me, I fell on the, on the foot of the bed. Then I don't know what it did, it was just, it kept on touching me, doing nasty things to me, holding my face. I was so, so annoyed, but I wasn't scared. I don't know why, I don't know, maybe the, these things, when they come, they are doing something on you so that you wouldn't be scared. Like, it took a long time until generation ends. Then it, then I tried to, to, to bite it because I was like, I have to fight back. I couldn't fight back because everything was happening in slow motion. When I was moving my hand, it was moving in slow motion. Everything was happening in slow motion. Then I beat it. I put it on the stomach. It pushed me like we started fighting, but I couldn't fight. It like it hit me so bad, and then it made me to pain again. Then it bite me on my on my palm. It was so painful. Then it put me back to the bed. When I woke up, I screamed again. Like my palm was so. It was pain from my palm to my to my toes. I had that pain. That pain stayed with me for almost 10 years until it just disappeared out of nowhere. And then it was still 2008, I was still not going to school. You know, I was always crying since from that day. I told my mother that no, I don't want to stay in this house. Those people from that church came to our house. They said they are going to protect us from these evil spirits. Now things are just worse. It's like they've just opened for them now. Then my parents decided to, to escape me, to take me to our family house somewhere in Bumalanga. I went there at the end of February. I stayed there around March, the whole of March. Since I went to that house, that Goloshi never came again. I never saw it again. And then I was taken back to my mother's house around April, because my mother decided to go to this other church. And then when I went back to my mother's house, to my mother's house, that thing came back again. In the same day that I went back to my mother's house, it started torturing me. It was it would, would also come when I was at the bank or at the store. Maybe we are at McDonald's or at KFC sitting there and eating. I would just fall asleep. People thought I just like sleeping. I would just sleep. Not that I was sleeping. Sleeping paralysis will hit me, and when you look at me, you will see as if like I'm sleeping. But my eyes, my eyes would be open, but it's just that I couldn't speak, I couldn't do anything. You know, when we are sitting, we don't just talk all the time. Sometimes there's a time where we keep quiet. That time, it was taking an advantage of it. It will sit on top of me, playing with my hair, because I used to have long hair. And I started hating hair. I cut my hair. I made sure that my hair always, always remained short because of this thing. It would brush my hair, and I thought, or maybe it just liked my hair. Then my mother took me to that church. They did nothing to me. They didn't pray for me. Just getting into that church, same day, that thing disappeared. I remember the night that we came back from church. I was sleeping, and I had a dream. I had a dream of this thing coming. Now I was dreaming. Because all of those, all of the times that, that thing that was when it was coming, I was not dreaming. I was seeing it like literally just I was in sleeping paralysis. Then this time I was not in sleeping paralysis and um, I was sleeping. Then I had a dream of it coming to me. It tried to touch me and then I fought, I fought back. Now everything was not happening in slow motion. I could fight, I fought with it, I fought with it, and then I beat it on the neck. Like, I beat it on the neck until blood splashed. Blood splashed, it splashed onto my face, on my body. I, 
I picked it and threw it and threw it away. Then I woke up. Since I woke up from that dream that day, I never had a decolosh in my life. Those things that I used to hear at night, they disappeared. My, when, my life went back to normal. Then in 2008, uh, no, in 2000, and, yeah, in that 2008, I went to the, I was transferred to St. John's Hospital. Then they told me that's where I was diagnosed with glaucoma. It was around June. I was diagnosed with glaucoma, told that I'm going to be blind for the rest of my life. Glaucoma does not have a, any cure. It can only be reversed if I have my sight. But now because I'm already blind, nothing can be done. And then I was told to see a social worker. The social worker that I got there, I don't remember her name, but I was so, so grateful to meet that social worker. She told me about schools for people with visual impairment. And then I decided to oh, now, because and I've been through the most. I've been through a lot. I was always crying. I was so, so thin. I had a lot of compression because I was not going anywhere. I was always in the house. When I go out is when I go with my family for shopping, but I wasn't going anywhere. I was thin and white. I didn't even have pictures because I hated pictures at that time. Then I went to school in 2009. I did my grade eight. At that time, I was 16 years of age. I thought I was the oldest one in class, but we were two. I, went, I did my grade 8, 2009, and then 2013, I completed my matric. When I go to school, now I see other people are blind, they are living their life. My first day was very hard in that school because that's where it hit her. Now I'm officially blind, I have to accept, I'm going to live like these people, I'm going to learn how to read and write with braille. And I learned Braille in three days. Some people are struggling, they're taking the whole year. But with me, I think maybe it's because of, I haven't been going to school for a very long time. And I was longing to go back to school. It was very, very easy for me to learn Braille. And then in a month time, I already knew how to read and write Braille, both the uncontracted and the contraction form. The uncontracted is a, is a type of Braille that is only letters A to Z and the numbers. And the uncontracted form is when the letters are being contracted, are being reduced, maybe let's say about, it, it will only be written A, B, and then there'll be a sign that will represent with, it's only a sign for with, unlike the uncontracted one, it will be written with W, I, T, H. But with the, con and it takes time, the contracted form, it, it, it takes a, a long time to learn. I learned that, Braille. I went to Philadelphia in 2010. I did my grade 9, then 10, 11, and 12, and then I started dating. Started dating in 2011, 2012. I fell pregnant in 2013. I was 21. Then I gave birth to my first son, Dumelo, and then I finished my matric. 2014, 15, 16, I didn't get space to study. And then 2017, I was accepted in TUT to do my degree in education. I completed my degree in 2021. Due to COVID-19, the 2020 year was extended to 2021. I graduated in June 2021, and I enrolled for my honors that 2021. Now I'm doing my second year in bachelor's of education in honors, and I just got a job at a high school in Tembisa. I'm teaching high school there. And my life went back to normal. I'm engaged. I was engaged last year in April, the 10th of April. I was lobolat and just that I don't know where's my ring now. <laughs> now my life, like I'm happy where I am. I have a YouTube channel where I motivate people and teach people about people who are living with visual impairment, like I'm doing a lot of things, I'm just happy. And my dream is to end up not working at a school directly with kids, but somewhere at the Department of Education, I want to be a curriculum, a curriculum developer. Yes, where I write books, develop books. After here, I'm going to study my master's, do my doctorate, my doctorate and maybe if God will be still giving me life. I will also do my PhD in education. 
yeah so thank you for giving me this moment to share my story and the last thing that i forgot how can i forget this important moment i fell pregnant again last year and i have the second son that i that i gave birth to this year on the 6th of february 2022 he is how many months now he'll be turning three months on the 6th of of may yeah so i'm happy I have a husband now and my life is just going well though it's difficult living with blindness but yeah we have to move we have to push we don't have to feel pity for ourselves all the time you just have to to also encourage yourself motivate yourself because if you keep on listening to other motivational speakers who are not blind as you are you won't you, you won't survive you need someone who has walk to the same path as you because now I got my strength when I went to Sibonile Primary School. I saw many blind people there and I was motivated and I told myself, Horlena, one day, as long as we are doing the same curriculum, the same syllabus, then which means my life is going to be better as it is right now. Yo, being a blind mom, I won't say it's difficult, but it's it's so unfortunate because you can't see their face. They have to tell you, Hori, hey, he looks like his father, he looks like you, he has your nose or what what. But raising an unborn child as a blind person is not difficult at all. It's not, it is not. Because I think maybe it's because of I have learned how to live being blind as I am. I don't know for others, but with myself, I, I have adjusted. Uh, with my first child, I didn't do anything with him because my mother was the one who was taking care of him. But with the second one, I was admitted in hospital. I stayed there for three days, so I have to. I had to adapt. And then when I went home, everything was easy. My firstborn, when he started talking, he would ask me, hey, "Vela, you can't see." I was like, "Yeah, I can't see." And he was like, well, "How?" But now I can see. When you are old, but you can't see. Now I'm a baby, but I can't see. Like I think he thought, or maybe it goes with age. And I have to explain. I kept on explaining, or mama can't see, ne? And you have to also talk to your kids, or you know the how how cruel kids can be. They'll laugh at him, or I when mama how haboni. Your mother can't see. Your mother blah blah blah. And I will tell him, or but your mother is educated. Again, and your mother loves you. People are not the same. Uh, this is how God decided that your mom is going to be, and I'm your mother. And the, he respects me. He respects me a lot. He doesn't take me for granted, or my mother is blind, or what. He, he loves me so much. He will phone me, or Mama, I miss you. Uh, Mama, when I grow up, I'm going to buy a car, and I'm going to drive you around. And I can, I can see sometimes or this thing of me not seeing. It also affects him sometimes, especially when I have a fight with my siblings, because me and my siblings, we fight a lot. We fight a lot. I think it's because of we are, we are very, very different. We are not the same. Our characters are not the same. So I would argue with them as an older sister. I would tell them, don't do this, do that. And they are the one who just take me for granted like they won't do what i tell them then i'll start i'll start yelling sometimes i cry sometimes i need help from them and they'll just say no i will want to go to the police station to do something they just say no i don't want to saying rude names hey it's not that when you are blind tina we have to help you it's not a must like because of you are blind you're not the special child in this family they'll say those kind of words in front of my child and it will hurt me a lot. It will, I would cry in front of him, some things that I, I didn't want my child to experience. And I will talk to my mother, like, tell them, even if we are fighting, let's not fight in front of my son, because he's my only child who, who was staying with us. My brother's child is not staying with us. And we are not staying, I think you have noticed that I didn't mention my, my older brother. He didn't really stay with us. He was staying, now he's staying in Alexander alone there. He just come to visit. I'm always fighting with my two siblings. So with my child, we, have, we are having the best relationship, mother and son relationship. My parents, we are also fine. The problem is just with my siblings there and there. We, are, we don't hate each other, it's just that we do have sibling rivalry. Hi, my name is Riboni Mohali and I have been through the most.